So on this little daily page in Good Notes, I have some stickers that I drew myself in Procreate. I have some like the flowers and these nice little papers that I bought from Etsy. And then I have some like these little more realistic looking ones that I saved off Pinterest. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. So we'll start in Pinterest. And as you can see, I've been searching for this kind of thing. So it, they're coming up in my, um, my feed, but something good to search for is here in my recents, fairy core stickers. And this will bring up a variety of things. And before I pick one, I just want to say that something that is a set of digital stickers that's for sale on Etsy, I wouldn't use any of those. I would pay for those if they were on Etsy because it takes time to put these together and um, it's worth it to pay people. I don't see any, those are amazing. I don't see any examples with watermarks, but you know what I mean. There's so much on here that um, ethically is like fair game, you know? I also wanna say that if you do make stickers like this and you're finding your source images on Pinterest that someone else already took the time to gather and lay out, I would not sell those like you can see here, she sells them on Redbubble. I wouldn't sell those as part of a digital sticker pack. This is just for your own stuff, <laughs> for your own personal use. I like this one. So what I do is I just open it up in full screen like that. And then the top volume and the power button Click those at the same time to take a screenshot. So I'm gonna go to Procreate, Photo, open my screenshot. And our goal is to pick out whichever little image we wanna use for a sticker and we're gonna save it as its own transparent background PNG. So I would like these candles. I'll show you a few ways to do that. One thing you can do is duplicate your layer, turn off your master copy, and this way we can be destructive and erase some of the other stuff, but still have all of these to start with when, we're gonna, when we wanna go back and select another one of the images to make a sticker from. So, I am gonna crop this down. To as close as I can get to these little candles. And now we wanna get rid of all of this so it's transparent. So background color, we want to turn that off so we can see the transparency. And of course, there's a few ways to do this. We could just go in with the eraser, but that's going to take a while to, you know, get in close around the shapes. What I think would be the wise thing to do here is I'm going to select the white or just, you know, pick the white in the color picker. I'm going to take a brush and just make this extra stuff white. And you'll figure out your own preference of this process. You know, there's tons of different ways to do it. But that was pretty quick. And since now this is all white and I'm not worried about the other little objects, I can go to selection, automatic. So you can see 
We've selected our flames, which we don't want to do, and we also still have a white border around these. So we can drag to make the threshold greater so that it'll select, so it'll get rid of and select tighter in to get rid of this white border. But since this is such a light white color here, it's starting to select that. So sometimes this works for this, it's not gonna work great. So something else we could try is automatic selecting our object. But that's gonna grab the background too once we select that light part. Um, but just for right now, just for this part at least, I think this looks pretty good, the way it's selected over here. So just to kind of show you this method, which would work really well for an image that has more contrast and doesn't have the white flames and this light area, we're going to select our object and we're going to go to invert because we still, what we really want is the background selected because we're trying to get rid of the background. And if this was a better selection, you could do three finger swipe and say cut, and that would just take out all the white. But since it's not a great selection, I'm going to go in with my eraser and right here where it's actually working, I'm going to, oops, actually look. <laughs> it's not, it has some of this not selected, so we can kind of stay tightly along the edge and make sure we don't erase that stuff in there. Still got kind of a white background. Mm. <laughs> that worked okay. Like if our paper color was like this, it would, that didn't work great. <laughs> all right, undo all of this. So automatic selection in Procreate honestly doesn't work that great sometimes. So I'm gonna go to freehand. And the reason this is cool and faster than simply tracing along the edge with an eraser is because for some areas that are more delicate, you can do it like that. You can trace along the edge and you know if some of the very outline of it gets erased, not a big deal. But you can also just tap And that's a lot faster than tracing. And, you know, this can be kind of tedious, especially if you have more complicated shapes than this. So if you're going along and you make a mistake, you didn't mess up your whole selection that you already worked on. The undo works for the last little segment. So like right here, I can just tap twice to go all the way down like that for the bottom. I want it to be more of a curve. So if I were really um, trying to be perfectionist with this and make it really good quality, have really tight selections, I would use Photoshop on the computer. But if you're just doing this for your own personal use and you want to do it all in on your iPad, Procreate works. So now I have that selected. We have our image selected. So I want to go to invert. So it'll select the outside of what we just selected. Three fingers swipe down, cut. And now we have our little PNG. 
our little sticker with a transparent background. And we could even crop that in a little tighter. And we're going to go to export, share. PNG, that's very important. That's the only one that's going to save this as a transparent background instead of a white background. And, you know, maybe you want to save it on your drive. Save it anywhere you want. I want to just save it to my camera roll on my iPad. So now, I'm going to go to GoodNotes. And GoodNotes has a bug with PNG images, which is annoying. We have this image tool here that brings up a little toolbar with your most recent images saved on the iPad. But when I select that, it has it doesn't have our nice transparent background. What the heck? So in order to import it as a transparent sticker, I'm gonna swipe up to get to this screen. I'm gonna take my photos, pull it over here so that it's sharing the screen like this. So now you can see this here. Something weird is that in the photos, like these two, you can see that they're PNGs. They don't have a white background, but these are two. So that's the iPad's problem that it saves it like that. But anyways, all you have to do is either with your finger or your pen, drag this over and check that out. We have our sticker. There we go. Okay, edit, long press again, add element, decor. And now, no matter what good notes document you're in, you have your little elements and it's ready to go as a little sticker. So I hope this was helpful. I did this process last night making some new little stickers and I was stuck for a while with the image tool not importing them transparent so just remember to have your photos open and import it like that and add it as an element or maybe if you have like copy if you have um, another document in GoodNotes, like this, stickers, where you want to save them all together in a little sticker book, that's another way to do it. It's cool to have a sticker book. This is kind of how we used to have to do it before GoodNotes added this handy little elements thing. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and have fun with your planner.